In this episode of One to One, I chat with Matthew Gould, a renowned leadership coach and author of Lead From Your Heart, The Art of Relationship-Based Leadership. Join us as we discuss how customer-facing teams can get past misalignment and conflict to create great CX. Matt, welcome aboard. This is uh, this is exciting. We've known each other for a bunch of years, and and with that comes comes a lot of experience spanning a, a bunch of years in in the field of leadership, coaching, and sales management. Can you share more about what led to uh, to your journey? Yeah, good to see you again, Scott. Our time at Telus was was incredible, and had its, it was a bit of a roller coaster, as you as you can remember. To me. Uh, I got into this leadership journey through a massive failure. <laughs> Early on in my career, I w- had the pleasure and opportunity to lead a team, and I had no idea what I was doing, and just really controlled people, and and it was awful. So it started a long journey of wanting to not fail and to get better at leadership and being in relationship with teams, and and now it's brought me here to uh, to running a company that focuses on leadership development. And that's cool. I think every every new leader probably has the same experience where they're an absolute failure right out of the gates and tried to do everything on their own and slowly had to learn that they had to let others do it and, and really lead versus manage. Um, and it's, it's a good segue into, I think, great leadership drives awesome customer experience. Um, so just as part of our normal icebreaker, what is customer experience in your own words? You know, I think it's what I've experienced with you already as we've reconnected uh, recently, which is excellent communication. Like to me, a customer experience is, is the, is there exceptional communication actually, uh, both ways, both with the customer and with, with the company. I think customer experience, when I think of a good one, I've, I've been seen, I've been heard, I've been understood, and I feel something. I feel some emotion is created where I feel trusted, valued, and, you know, in the last few weeks since you and I have been chatting, I, that's what I felt in, in our exchanges. And so to me, customer experience is like customer exchange. What are we exchanging uh, in relationship with each other? I think you nailed it around. To me, customer experience is all about creating that local personal relationship. Like you're, you're actually building rapport with somebody versus just trying to sell them something. You're building something that's going to last a while versus this one and done, sell something and move on to to the next person. So I really like that that summary of, of what CX is in your own words. Yeah, it's, it's also a person to person, right? A customer, if we can take the label off for a second, hey, what's your name? You know, where, where are you based? What, where are you? And who are you? And before we even get started, like building that, building that rapport with a human, not a customer, not a prospect, not a potential exchange of commerce and money. You know, it's to me, it's really who are you as a human? Who am I as a human? And and what are we trying to achieve together? And let's make it let's make it a cool experience. Let's make it a cool exchange. I agree. And you know, I think some of my best CX experiences have been with with folks I've worked with, I've I've built a bond with versus just kind of that transactional aspect of things. And you know, from a stat flow standpoint, that's helped us be uber successful. A building out a customer base through old connections and, and reconnecting with folks like yourself, and also just with our existing customers of you know them becoming our va- biggest advocates. I think that's what true CX is: is your your customers are actually selling the value of your service or solution for you. Yeah, you mentioned the word advocate, Scott. Both sides, and I don't believe there's sides to to a customer experience. I believe we're all together if it's done extremely well. And imagine if we were advocates of each other. So you so you have customers who are advocating for Statflow's great experience at driving sales and driving driving customer experiences. Likewise, Statflow, from my experience, has been advocates of their customers. So that's another way to look at this: is you know, are we advocating for each other? I seen I saw some of the testimonials on your website, and your customers are advocating for you. You're also advocating for them. By having them on your website, so it's a cool relationship that you guys have created with your customers. Yeah, it's fun, and I think you know, going back to you know some of your recent experiences of of this book that you wrote, that's that's really a cool concept. I think everybody wants to write a book, but most people are afraid to do so. Uh, in your book, Lead from Your Heart: The Art of Relationship Based Leadership, 
you discuss how personal and professional lives are a collection of that relation-based experience. Um, can you share some insights on on how teams can leverage this principle and build that one-to-one relationship with customers? Absolutely. Relationships are everything. You know, if if we don't have a relationship internally with a coworker, how how fun is that going to be when we're when we're doing our craft? You know, uh, you know the typical boss leader and the hierarchy. I think that's that's just old. That's just an old way of of leading and being in relationship, um, because there's a power struggle. What if we could just be doing something in service of our mission as a company and doing it together? And you know, relationships, Scott, as you know, uh, they don't just stay at work. You know, most of us are home. We're, as the recording of this, we're still going through a pandemic. And so a lot of us, you know, including you, including me, we've been, we've been asked to work at home. And so this relationship we have working at home with kids, with dogs, with, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it is an art. And there's been times as of recently where it's kind of messy. <laughs> the art can be messy. And the cool part about art and the cool part about being in relationship is we get to create all the time. And, you know, it's not a finished piece. Relationships, customer experience, you know, this art of leading, it truly is an art. And when we mess up, hey, we can we can paint over it together. You're talking about just that that relationship based experiences and kind of that mix of personal and professional. One of our, you know, a, a very large prospect for us, been talking to them for four or five months. And, you know, my office was a little bit different when I had a bunch of my earlier calls. TV was behind me. You know, one of my kids would sometimes be watching Paw Patrol. And it's funny, once I moved my office around, the first statement of this this person's mouth was, hey, I can't watch Paw Patrol. That's more interesting than talking to you. What's going on? It just builds that that instant rapport of I get it. Everybody everybody's dealing with their own stuff. And it's uh, yeah, it builds that ultra personal bond. Well, well, just just if you think about that for a second, like if your children walked into the screen I think a great customer experience says, hey, this is, you know, this is my daughter, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, this is me. This is dad. I'm doing my work. You know, anything to say versus, you know, go away, go away, (laughs) quickly going to the mute button and and, and really pushing away relationship. It's like, no, no, these are my kids. And, you know, now let's now let's get back to talking about what it is we're trying to achieve on the on the business front. So, I, you know, we need to learn as 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 we adapt in a pandemic. Relationship includes the messy. It includes the dog barking. It includes, hey, dad, what's for lunch? You know, right when you're doing a board member uh, proposal. I, I think it's, we need to just enjoy ourselves a bit more. For sure. And so how does that, you know, your book around Lead from the Heart, when you think about building that deeper connection and all, ultimately for most businesses, it's all about driving results. How do you, how do you kind of pair that together to ensure that you're building that one-to-one relationship and you're, you're obviously driving better results. It's funny the word results. You know, let's 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 just go to results for a second. When you say results, what do you mean, Scott? I'm assuming you mean revenue, key metrics, KPIs. Yeah, it's a variety of metrics and today yes, we're a, <clears throat> for Staffla, we are a venture back company. Part of it is are we generating our the desired growth and result and sales and revenue results? Yeah. That's part of it. I think the other piece for me is have we created that a big pillar of our metrics on the revenue side is have we created killer advocacy amongst our existing customers to to simplify our, our sales process and again create that that ecosystem of you know staff flow really is seen as a thought leader yeah so so the the question around metrics how do you balance that to me and and as as we write in the book relationships are a longer word for revenue. <laughs> it's just a different way to spell it. If you don't have, yeah. it, honestly, if you don't have a relationship, you don't have reoccurring, growing revenue. You don't. Like walk me, walk me through, if I don't have a relationship with you, we're not doing this podcast. If, if I don't have for a sure. relationship, I get a text from you. I'm, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I get a text from, from a stat flow experience and you know, I'm, I, I have a cell phone and I get a text from my dealer. And if I don't have a relationship with that dealer, I'm not doing commerce, commerce with them. 
And so I'm not, that's, I'm not a revenue, there's no revenue going to be generated over and over and over again. So I think there's an opportunity for people to really understand that relationship equals revenue. It, it, I, I just don't understand, I don't know another way. So if we can get away from some of the t- typical language, hey, how come, how come, how come? Actually, what kind of relationships are you generating with your clients? Because I tell you, what I love about what you guys do and, and, the, and what your customers get a hold of is people love control. They love control. If I get a text message about you know, my services that potentially need to be renewed, wow, I get to decide when I respond to that text. I get to, to, to do it on my terms, uh, when I want, with whom I want. And texting is such a cool way to do that because the customer's in control. So yeah, I don't know, that long-winded answer to r- results and metrics, boy, is that ever non-human language? How about how great are your relationships? Because I tell you, if you have great relationships, I'll, I'll show you the results that are being generated. They're going to be great. I've seen this in a lot of your uh, LinkedIn posts and social media posts around the WTF uh, and what the beep versus, you know, the SWN of so what now mindset. Can you elaborate on this philosophy and talk about how it can be applied in the context of CX? Absolutely. Uh, it, business exchanges, relationships are never perfect. Uh, have you ever, Scott, have you ever misinterpreted an email or a text message from, from your wife or, or a customer or an employee? Have you ever misinterpreted some form of communication? Daily. And it's usually the opposite, too, where people are misinterpreting what I'm saying. So it's, yeah, that happens daily <laughs> I think for both sides. Yeah, we put our foot in our mouth. We, we make assumptions. One of my favorite expressions is in the absence of information, we make stuff up. You know, there's a lot of assumptions getting created in between the words in this digital world. And, and so t- to me, we can quickly create a feeling or an emotion or make up a story that says, you know, WTF, what did Scott mean? WTF, why did Matt say it this way? And if going back to this art of leading, art of being in relationship, the art of customer service is, yes, there are gonna be mistakes. Yes, there are, are gonna be misinterpretations. Great. We can live in that tension of WTF, like really frustrated. What's the experience going to be like when we're really frustrated? It, it, you know, it's going to cause churn. It's going to cause definitely revenue is going to drop if, 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 stuff, if someone isn't being seen, heard, and understood. So, so to me, we, we can transfer over to so what now? So what now? What, like, so what do we do now? You know, relationships are a we. Relationships are not, they're not an I, they're not singular. We're in relationship together. So what do we do now? So that there's a really good customer experience mindset of when there's an issue, you know, WTF, there's an issue. I have an unhappy customer on the line. What if we could say good, like really good. That's great. We have an opportunity now to both be in control of going from misaligned to aligned. That's it. Like WTF is just misalignment. It can also be positive, Scott. Like, like, OMG, I won the lottery. (laughs) You know, OMG, (laughs) like WTF, I just, I just got a promotion. WTF, we just landed a big customer. Even after a positive WTF moment, okay, so what now? What do we do? What do we do now to create an exceptional lifelong relationship with this customer? So yeah, it's a real mindset shift of control. WTF is usually, oh, something's out of control. Yeah. And SWN is, oh, let's, let's, what do we do now? How do we do it right now? I think that's a killer mindset that, you know, a lot of young organizations or even established organizations should, should really take to heart. I think it's a good segue around, you know, people in customer facing roles are always dealing with conflict and misalignment uh, with their customers, with their internal stakeholders, a variety of folks, there's always misalignment and conflict. How can they go beyond these struggles and build trust with both, you know, their customers as well as their, their leaders and or peers within their existing organization? I think the first thing, a really good customer response to a conflict is tell me more. You know, as I said earlier, in the absence of information, we make stuff up. 
And so if a customer calls me and they're really upset, I don't know what's driving it. So, so tell me more. You know, if, if people listen to this podcast, take anything away, one of the things they can, they can take away is when there's conflict, get more information. That's what I love about Statflow. You're, you're looking to reach out to the customer to, hey, tell me, tell me more. You know, hey, it's your dealer. Here's, here's a text message for me. You're looking to get information. Not to do a deal, not to earn revenue, but to get in relationship again with a customer. So to me, anytime there's an issue f- for me with, with relationships, whether it's a customer, whether it's my wife, whether it's family members, whether it's friendships, is good. Thank you. First of all, number one, good. You have enough trust in me that you're going to tell me things are offside. Good. My, my first response is tell me more. Because guess what, Scott? People love to be seen and heard, especially when they're frustrated. Hey, tell me more. How are we misaligned? I'd love to know. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Let's get to it together. It's pretty good relationship advice, too. It's, it's well, the work in, world. In, it's in, awesome. Without being silly about it, I, I think problems with customers are great. Here's the worst part, Scott. When a customer doesn't tell you there's an issue. Silence is deadly. Because they're going, they're most likely going somewhere else. For sure. And there's a, there's a really cool customer success platform. A, an old coworker, Statflow, works there. It, uh, it's called Catalyst Software. And, and they always have these memes around, you know, a customer, you think things are going great, but you haven't talked to them in, in 12 months. And all of a sudden they disappear and you can't figure out why. And that's, that's a good example of it's better to have those rough conversations on a regular basis Versus just avoiding yeah. the conflict and hoping everything kind of works out. Because, yes, chances are they're going to leave you as a customer. The, the other thing to add to that, Scott, you mentioned you put an adjective in front of conversation, like tough conversation, rough conversation, difficult conversation. One of the things that I work with clients on is take the adjective away. We're just going to have a conversation. Let's just have a conversation. You know, misalignment's a great word rather than we're in conflict. No, we have some misalignment. Now let's, how do we find a way? So what now? How do we move into alignment? And information sharing is the way. You know, when we give feedback to employees, when we get feedback and customer service reviews, you know, whether they're a 10 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10, it's just information. You know, someone's trying to articulate something with a 1 out of 10 rating. Okay, great. Tell me more. I don't know what the 1 means. Hey, tell me more about that. You know, because they're frustrated, Scott, they got a 1. Well, if, if you're a great company, you're frustrated they got a one. Oh, now we're aligned. We're both frustrated. How do we make this a 10? What can we do? What can you do? And what can we do together? Yeah, I love that synopsis of tell me more. Ask a lot of questions to your customers, to your team members, et cetera, to, to better understand. And it's all about having conversations, not adding that, you know, rough, tough, difficult conversation it's you're having a conversation remove all the stress out of it from the beginning and just have an open dialogue which i think is is great to to keep in everybody's uh mindset as they as they interact with customers and their and their teams you know you think about your advocacy around the approach of taking 100 percent responsibility for whatever your situation is and we often see leaders i've seen it i've i've done it in the past too where, where leaders blame their teams for ineffective customer engagement <laughs> it happens i don't think I think everybody's guilty of this at, at some time in their, their career. How do you suggest correcting this mindset and encouraging sales leaders to take the responsibility of creating you know, that environment where the importance of customer engagement is, is clearly defined? Are we a team or are we not a team? You know, if, if, you, if, you, if you blame someone on the team, you've got, now you've got a winner and a loser. You know, I'm right, you're wrong. You know, blame, blame is short. Here's, a, here's something for you, Scott. Blame is short for be lame. <laughs> like, let's just be lame as leaders. If, if I blame you, I'm just totally being lame. The second thing I'm doing is, is, is I'm choosing to be powerless. Because if it's your fault, you have all the control. So I'm powerless. What if, what if instead of being lame... I took full responsibility and said, okay, we're a team. Looks like we've, like we, do you hear, you'll hear the language in we a lot. Like, okay, we've dropped the ball. We, our servers are getting overloaded, our. So what do we need to do now as a team? Who's on it? 
When are we going to know? Let's talk about it. Who needs help? Right? So, so blaming is another, another word for blame is excuse. You know, just making an excuse. Well, if I excuse myself from the problem as a leader, I've just created division. You know, if I excuse myself from the situation and I blame my company when I'm working with a, with a customer and I excuse myself, well, well, now I'm not part of the solution either because I've, I've been excused. So language really matters and, and blame, like no one wants to hear blame. Oh, it's our server. Oh, oh, it's the internet. Oh, oh, it's shipping. Oh, it's pure later. Like what, what? Like we're no closer to the start line of fixing it. So, so tell me more. Okay. What do you think we need to do? Here's what I think we're going to do. Like, like, Go from blame to taking full responsibility of your experience is a less than experience. It's just less than. We both agree it's less than. So let's empower each other to make it better than. That's that's probably the easiest way for me to to talk about that. Like blaming is just lame. It's just super lame. Thanks, Matt. This is this is fun. Um, it's been a while since we, we spoke and it's, it's really cool to see the success you've had as a leadership coach and taking all the stuff you've learned and applied it to a bunch of different organizations. If anybody wants to reach out to you or connect with you, where, where can our listeners connect with you or find you? Thanks for asking. Um, and thanks for this. It's been great. I'm relatively active on Instagram and at morco.ca is my Instagram handle. Also on LinkedIn, I do like to write a lot and share a lot of the coaching that I get to do and working with teams and helping them to compete to win together. I, I articulate a lot of it on LinkedIn. So uh, those, those two platforms are really effective. And yeah, it's really just about getting in, in conversation. You know, let's just, it's, it's less about the content and more about a relationship. Let's just get into a relationship. And yeah, so thanks for that. And it's really good to connect with you and it's good to see you continue to have great success. And yeah, more, more people need to know about Statflow. Awesome, thanks, Matt. Have a great day. See you, Scott. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're a fan of One to One, be sure to give us a five-star review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Catch you next time.